Hi, I'm Peter Haddock and I'm on the Caterpillar stand at Con Expo with Alan, who's the expert for this brand new product, the Cat 13D. This engine is launched here at Con Expo, Alan. Correct. There's been a lot of work going into this. We've already talked to one of your colleagues about it. Taking some 18 liter engines down to this 13D can do the same work. But Alan, I don't know how you've managed to do it. <laughs> so talk to me about the through components that we've got here and why they are integral into the way we've designed this engine. Sure, absolutely. We'll walk a few features at a time. Yeah, yeah. A lot of that secret you already know about, my colleague talked about, it's inside internal, but we'll go outside. First and foremost, there is no front gear train anymore. All right, okay. Right? It's missing, right? All of our other engines had front gear train. Let's move to the back. It's a big Why play would you on do that? sound and vibration. Right. Sound okay. and vibration. Yeah, yeah. You'll also notice our alternator and refrigerant compressors are now bolted straight onto the block. Yeah. What better dampening system than the block itself? It's the most stiff part. Yeah, right? of course. Yeah. So, so quieter. Quieter. Yeah. Yeah. Less vibration and quieter. Right. On this side right here, yep. this is the fluids module. Yep. What we usually do is uh, we convey fluids like fuel, coolant, and oil throughout the engine to make it function, right? right, but right, right. This time around, we thought, why not try to do that in the shortest way possible with the fewest leak joints as possible? Right. So we've taken 15 to 20 different components and we've consolidated them into a single module. Right. If you remove the components, there's no leak joints. There's no. Right. Okay, so, so therefore, it's more sealed. It's and therefore, sealed. you've got less of an issue with when, when the engine is, is worn later yeah. on down the life cycle. When we talk proactive quality, yeah. these are examples of proactive quality. Fantastic. Design the joints out. Right, come yeah. on, tell me some more about right, the next. Let's, let's well, fo follow us around, <laughs> folks. This is the next bit. Okay, so. Okay. Let's talk about the high pressure fuel system. Yep. As it is one of the most advanced uh, that we offer, one of the best injectors that yep. we we have uh, to history. This features some zero static leak injectors, which means- What does that mean? What does yeah, that come mean? On. What right? zero, this is zero, that zero is confusing static, me, Alan. Come on, what does it mean? What zero is it? static leak injectors right. basically means the fuel comes when you need it, yep. and it doesn't continuously wash around in there. Oh, okay. It doesn't gather heat unnecessarily. Right. Yep. It doesn't waste fuel unnecessarily. Right. So. Building blocks like that high pressure fuel system common rail that you're looking at as well yep. as the zero static leak injectors. Coupled with things like our advanced control system, yep. our electronic system, is how we're able to get such good fuel, uh, fuel consumption. And that's all about all the sensors that are in this engine, mm -hmm. folks. And it's actually about the way in which you design in the controls to optimize this engine in lots of different uh, applications. And wheel loaders to excavators and beyond to industrial. Absolutely. Now, Alan. We always see at the top of an engine a different, yeah, a different color, not even the yellow of Caterpillar. This is the important thing on a stage five engine, isn't it? Tell me what it's all about and how that has changed the after treatment. The after treatment technology has, for the first time, a DOC on DPF technology. Whereas previously, yeah. a DOC and a DPF might be separate components. Yeah. Now it's a DOC coating over right. the DPF, save some space. Yeah. Um, other than that, the SCR, again, optimized for DEF consumption along with our control system, basically saving the customer's DEF and fluids consumption. Right, so saving in fluids, consolidation smaller again for the OEMs that are using right. this um, engine allows yes. them to really reduce the overall size Absolutely. of that whole space, yeah. So, something you would have noticed is that this after treatment system is 10 inches shorter than our current C13B. Okay. We've enabled that by building in inside yep. hydraulic lash adjusters. Whereas previously, you needed to get in there yep. in order to change lash. Right. Since it's automatic now with hydraulics, we can now lower, lower the, the system. Whole thing. So it's 10 inches, and that's good for your chassis room. 10 inches is a lot of space, folks. Right, come on, let's follow his round. <laughs> Now, you said we've taken it from that side, we've bringing it in this side. Come yeah. on, remind us, Alan, what we've done here from, okay. from the front end to the back end as such. So, I mentioned we don't have a front gear train anymore. Now yep. it's a rear gear train. Now the beauty of that, of course, is noise, vibration. Yep. 
But what you're seeing here is we've also provided more configurability, more what? flexibility for the customers. And we're really proud about, these PTOs are pretty famous, right? You see these on our other engines. Yep. But now these adapters are clockable if customers need their pumps in different orientations. Oh, uh, right. Okay. Also, yeah. also, they can handle up to SA, B, C, and D tier pumps now. Right. More power coming off hydraulics if needed. And if, these, if this wasn't enough, on this side, we also offer pumps. Right. So hypothetically, you can have one, two, three, four right. pumps, maybe even a fifth or a sixth if you stack them. Yep. And if you want another one, there's another option down here for SAB, up to seven pumps. It's Pump Bonanza here with the 13T. <laughs> and that's crazy. But what we are seeing though, in, in real terms, is we're seeing customers looking at the way in which they have their product. So an excavator, for example. We previously, I know Excavated literally just had the bucket on the front. Now you've got things like really intense applications and attachments. We've got, we see a lot of things like tilt rotators Absolutely. with all of the attachments on there needing a lot of hydraulic power, exactly. don't we? And exactly. this optimization, the delivery of power into those pumps and the redundancy that people need for the actions and the slewing yeah. of those machines really makes that powerful option and allows us to do things faster and therefore be more productive, doesn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. Right. Come on, Alan, let's get around the, <laughs> further around the machine here. So, we're gonna finish off here, Alan. Yes. For the final bit of the engine. Yes. What is it all about? Our fabulous variable turbo charger. Right. And this is the reason for why we're able to go from 340 all the way up to 515 kilowatts with a single iron set. Right. Because of this, we're able to regulate that airflow to yep. match what the fuel is needing through the electronics. Everything's working in concert right now, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The sensors with our advanced controls. But because of this, we're able to go from that 456 to 690 horsepower. Alan, what we're doing here, folks, we're turbocharging the industry right now, <laughs> aren't we? We're, we're pumping out all of the power. We're actually making it smaller. We're reducing the space. We're getting more out of every drop. And that is just phenomenal to see that we've gone from 13, 18, down to 13. Yes. But the power's there. The options are better and everybody has an opportunity now to reduce the size of their machines and their equipment and to really get the big power that is seen from their cat engine. Alan, well done to you and the team. Thank Phenomenal you. job. Thank Thanks you. very much, folks.